Hi everybody! Before I start the book reviews for the month of May, I just want to say congratulations to my friend Anu, who was published in ecoparent.ca, and the name of the article is How Empathy Fosters Inclusion, and I think it's perfect for the month of May, which is Asian American Pacific Islander Month. It seems like I have a lot of books here, and I just realized it is. So let's get started. The first book I'm going to talk about is A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki. I chose this uh, accidentally for the month of May and realized that May is um, American, His American Asian Pacific Islander Awareness Month. And I'm so glad I chose this book because May also happened to be Mental Health Month and I think a lot of us struggled in May. I'm included in that. First, I don't have to tell you this because you are my audience and you're incredibly bright, caring and compassionate, but whoever is beating up women with children and elderly Asian women in bus stations, please stop. Okay, moving on. This is a story of a woman named Ruth and she lives in one of my happy places which is Vancouver Island. She discovers something along the shore and it links her to a Japanese teenager named Naomi or well she goes by now but in my head I keep hearing Naomi. This is a book that you wonder are these people in the same time? Is this going back and forth in time? Has time been suspended? It's really interesting. I can't get over a few things about this author. The author is 60s, if you see her interviews. I'm gonna guess 60s. And she writes a Japanese teenager so well. And I admire people who can do that. My friend Ann Miller writes a young adult romance. And I said this about Anne, and I'll say this about Ruth Ozeki. You have a talent if you can write other age groups. This book is amazing, and it deals with a lot of issues, but one of them is bullying. And that's what we're dealing with right now with the rise in hate crimes against people of Asian descent. And I think this is a great read. I think young adults should could read it, and people my age could read it. I, it's really well done. I love certain characters. I love the grandma who's a nun. There were a lot of political commentaries, and they were very superficial. It doesn't go into deep things, but they do acknowledge the wrongs that the Japanese uh, soldiers did against the Chinese. I think very few people know about that. The only reason I know about that is my friend is Chinese and she told me uh, that they would hide the children um, from the soldiers. I really like this book. I, I could not stop reading it. Okay, so keep that in mind because let's see how well I do for the others. For the month of June, we're reading The Yellow House by Sarah M. Broom. If you can see where my bookmark is, you will see that I am not making very good progress and my book club meets on, I think it's June 12th, and I'm only on page 60. Uh, and I think there's like 365 pages. It's not going well. And I don't know if it's my fault yet. I don't know if it's Sarah Broom's fault or my fault. I'm a slow reader, I've talked about this before. It's a slow read and i have it's an autobiography and the yellow house obviously is where she grew up. It's in Louisiana and I'm learning a lot of geography about Louisiana. I'm also really thrilled that this is a person of color because I would like to support the Black, Black Lives Movement by reading books by African American authors. So I'm really thrilled that my local library has chosen this book for June. It's a slow read, but it's not bad. I'll show you a slow read that is bad, okay? This is a slow read that's bad. For the love of a dog, understanding emotion in you and your best friend, Patricia B. McConnell. I read her autobiography and 
I thought, wow, that's really brave for a woman who's like 70 to talk about some really horrific things that happened and her career as a dog trainer. And then she wrote this prior to the autobiography and I thought, let me read this. This is a hard read. Even though I have a background in psychology, I majored in neuroscience, it feels familiar talking about the different psychological uh, theories like operant conditioning, but this is a tough read. It really is, and it's dry. This is not. This is mostly me making a commitment and this life being busy. So I don't know enough and I don't want to know because I like being surprised. And it's also the anniversary of the Tulsa, Oklahoma massacre. So it kind of feels like the right book to read for this time. So I'm really happy that this came into my life right now. This one's a tough read. I don't know if I can get through it. And this one is along the same vein, The Secret History of Kindness, Melissa Holbrook Pearson, Learning from How Dogs Learn. So I'm on page, I think, 114, and we've just now started discussing clicker training. And until then, again, it was just like the psych textbooks from undergrad, Skinner and operant conditioning. So this one's a slow read, but at least I'm making progress. Whereas this one, I'm just stuck. So we'll see if I make it. Next, I indulged myself <laughs> and, and I read a book called The Dog Who Danced. This was such a great little book. And I call this, this is my new genre, and you can quote me on this, I call this airport books. When I go to the airport, my favorite airport is Pearson in Toronto. It has a line of bookstores called The Watermark, and I always run <laughs> to the bookstore. I don't care what time the next connecting flight is. I'll run in the bookstore, take a peek, and then run to the gate to catch my flight. And I consider this an airport book, very similar to T.R.A. Jones' American Marriage. Why? I read it like in no time. It's a story of a dog and his owner. And she's probably my age, doesn't have a lot of money, and needs to get from Portland, Oregon to Massachusetts for a family emergency. Because she doesn't have very much money, she hitches a ride with a tractor trailer driver. Something goes very wrong where she's separated from her dog. There's an unusual characteristic about this dog. Will she reunite with him? Who finds him? Who takes care of him? And I don't know why, this was just a sweet little book. And our next door neighbors adopted two, two Australian shepherds and they're adorable. I'll put the picture right here. Absolutely adorable. And I've been trying to convince the children next door <laughs> to teach the children, the dog, how to dance because I read a book called The Dog Who Danced and the kids are like, no, thank you, but we'll see. Okay, this one was like, I need to fall asleep, tough day at work. Woman's best friend, women writers on dogs in their lives. Now I read, did a book review on women at work and I'll link that below. It's about creative women and their morning routines and how they sit down to work and composers and writers and authors. And I even linked it to my own morning routine. I don't know why, but I'm having really a hard time blogging, even though it was requested by one of my colleagues who follows my channel. She said, you should really vlog. We want to know what your day is like. And I don't know why I have so much trouble. I didn't during the pandemic when we were on furlough, but now I, I don't know why. So this was the book that I thought would inspire me to be more creative and I'd learn about these women's careers and how they do it and also a little bit about their dogs. I didn't recognize one author or one writer. I don't know it's because they were local like newspaper writers. I just didn't and I don't feel bad about that and I don't criticize the book for that. I'm just saying that this isn't the same caliber of women at work. It's not the same. This is more like experience with aggression and 
euthanizing a dog, like all the stuff we all have to go through as pet owners. And I finished this too, it was a nice little read. Okay, now we all have secret books. What is your secret book, okay? I thought this was hilarious. It's called The Antidote, Happiness for People Who Can't Stand Positive Thinking. I don't live in a big city, I wish I did. I don't have access to public transport, I wish I did. This would be something I would not read on the subway, <laughs> even though the title is hilarious. Happiness for People Who Can't Stand Positive Thinking by Oliver Berkman. And it's actually all right. He's a good writer and he's questioning what makes us happy and I don't know what it is yet. Is it meditation? Is it goal setting? So he's going through different things and I, I haven't gotten to the end, but this is one of my secret books. And then my friend, Jan, got annoyed when I said I've never read Fifty Shades of Grey. And let me leave you with this. This is my a secret book and I'm too embarrassed to read it. I don't know why. I'm just embarrassed. I haven't started reading it. Uh, what do you think? Should you think should I just like plow through, say, you know what, it's the summer, uh, I'm gonna sit by the pool and read Fifty Shades of Grey? Uh, I'll report back, so stay tuned. So everybody, before I go, the book for June is The Yellow House. It's an autobiography, and I hope you join me then, and we'll review this together. Thanks everyone. Have a wonderful Memorial Day and thank you to our troops who gave up their lives so we can have freedom and security and let's never take that for granted. Bye for now.